What you can also do with Carve Code Maker is import images into the software and the software will automatically generate a 3D model for you or a relief. This is based on a height map. So it's all dependent on the lighter areas and the darker areas which are going to be deeper. And that's how it creates a relief of the image. So to do this, if you select the relief drop down at the top, so you would already create your model to do this. So select the relief drop down, go to import, and then go to import again, okay? Don't select import 3D model, it's just import. Then what you can do is come down and select the image that you would like to use. So I want to use this little boy and his dog. So select open. And this will automatically generate a model for me. And it's created it in what we call floating clip art. So anything that is blue is floating clip art. So if I grab that, I can move it around. When it's yellow, the same as the 3D view, that means that it's been pasted down and you can't move that then, okay? Now, I've brought this in and the image was created as 2000 pixels square. But because I'm working in inches, it's brought it in as 2000 inches square. So I need to make this a bit smaller to fit. So let's say I wanted it to be nine inches. Select apply and it goes off screen. So if I zoom out, you can see that it's actually up here. Now, a quick tip is if you press F9 whilst it is selected, it will go into the center or you can enter the origin position here and it will go back into the center. So if I press F9 and then zoom in on this center, you can see that it's generated this relief for this little boy. Now, the height range is quite high. So at the moment, it's almost one inch. So even though looking from the plan or the view from the top, it looks okay. If I were to rotate this around, it would look very, very high and it wouldn't look correct. So if I rotate now, you can see that it's not looking very good. So what I need to do is drop that down. So I can do that either like so with the red arrow or I can enter in a specific size. So let's say a quarter of an inch and apply. And that will drop that down. Now, if I want to, I can resize this like so. I can move it around. Just bear in mind that any of this that is going over the model won't be pasted down, okay? So if I press F9 and then you can either select enter to paste or select paste down here. And that creates a 3D model for me or a relief model for me. And I can machine this and I'll show you how to do that in a later video. Right, so this is also useful if you have grayscale images. So these have been created from 3D pieces and exported out as a grayscale. So these are quite good because they automatically generate a, a nice 3D piece for you. So if I were to reset this, so if I come here to reset the relief, and it just gets rid of that picture or that relief that I have. Let's go to relief again and import import again and then let's select this Pegasus that I have. So I'll select open. Now again this has opened and it's over here and that's because it thinks that it's almost a thousand inches. So let's make that smaller. Let's make that nine inches and apply and again press F9 to center it. Okay so this has basically created this 3D model from an image. So I can move that up or down if I want to. Let's say I bring that down to there, almost three quarters of an inch. 
press enter to paste that down. Okay, I'll show you in a later video how to sort all of this roughness out and also how to get rid of this edge around here. So that's another useful thing to bring in grayscale images and you can generate a relief from it. What you can also do is use a photograph of a texture and you can machine textures and you can use this as a texturing tool. So if we reset that and go to relief again, go to import and import again. And let's say that I want to import this brick wall. So if I open that, again, this is quite large. So let's make that 12 inches and apply. Press F9, put that in the center. Let's bring the height of that right the way down. So to about there, and you can see that I've got this texture. Now what you can do with this is you can machine within a vector. So you could machine this texture onto a part that you were doing. So if I paste that down, you can see that I've got this texture. Okay, I could do it again with some wooden planks, let's say. So let's import and let's use this wooden background. Now this is going at 90 degrees. Let's say that I wanted it the other way around. So let's resize this again and select apply. Press F9 to center that. Okay, so let's say that I wanted to edit this up a little bit. I want this to be the whole width or the height of the model. When you're using clip art to transform, if you press the padlock, it can go from width and height that's locked to all three of the options being locked to having none that are locked. So if I change the height of that to 12, select apply, it stretches it out. Okay, now I can do exactly the same thing with this. I can drop that down if I wanted to, let's say like so. And what I want to do is rotate this around. Now, what I can do is just put 180 there, or I can rotate on the outside here. Just press Alt on the keyboard, and it maintains an angle snap. And then when I'm happy with that, press Enter on the keyboard or the Paste option. And you can see that I've got these wooden planks. Now, so far, I've been showing you how to import images by using my own preferred method, which is going to the relief drop down and then importing an image. The reason that I prefer this method is because you can change the size in X and Y and you're not constrained by the aspect ratio. So I'm going to show you a few other ways that you can do this. So here you can see that I've got an image and I've got Carveco Maker open to the side. What you can also do is drag and drop that image into the software. Then it will give you a dialog box that opens up and it allows you to change the height and the width. But notice when I change the height of this, let's say I wanted to do this in millimeters, this one you can see that it also changes the width. Okay, so it's constrained, it's keeping that aspect ratio. But what you can also do is specify a height in Z. Okay, so if I were to say five millimeters and then select okay, this is just telling me that the resolution of this model was quite high, so it's, it's lowering it down to 4 million pixels, which is the limit for Carveco Maker. So if I select OK, and I'll just maximize this, and then rotate around. Now you can't really see this at the moment because when you do this, it displays the bitmap over the top of the relief. So if I click this button here to display the material, this then shows me 
the relief that I've generated from that image. Okay, if I want to see the image over the top of it again, select that button. You can see it again. Okay, so let's close that. Another thing that you can do is select open and then select it. And then when you select that, you'll have this minimum Z and maximum Z. So if I were to put that at five and select OK, it will then give me that dialog box again, but it will already be filled in that the height in Z is five. And it does exactly the same thing. Okay, so the final way to do this is if I were to create a new model and then go over to bitmaps over here, right click on that and select import. And then if I take a look on my desktop, I've got that image again. And then let's scale it like I normally would. So I want this to fit. Select open. And then what this does, if I display the bitmap, it shows me the image as normal. Okay. So if I go to the 2D view, I've got the image, but you'll notice that I haven't created the relief. Okay. So if I go back, it's completely blank. Now, what I can do is open those bitmap layers up and then I can right click on the bitmap layer and create relief. Now, the good thing about this is that it automatically allows me to grab the handle and change the size of this. Okay, so just grab that and you can change the size to whatever you like. Okay, or you can enter the height in here and then select apply. So that's another way to create a relief from an image. The good thing about doing it this way is that you can keep on adding to these bitmap layers and then generating reliefs from it. And also you can do that by using the relief drop down menu. You can't do that if you drag in a new image because it will want to create a new model for you. Okay, so that's how you generate reliefs from images.